All right, guys, so I'm really excited to show you guys today's cut. Um, I've been doing a haircut every single day. What I love about this whole entire experience so far is that uh, it's pushing me to try new things constantly and just really getting uh, really inspired. So I appreciate you guys watching every day and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying all of the haircuts that we've done. Um, so today's haircut comes from Jennifer and uh, Jennifer asked, she sent out a request and this was interesting because she said, can you do the Carly Rae Jepsen haircut from the latest her latest appearance on Ellen DeGeneres? So I looked it up. Um, her haircut's really cool, really fun. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys my end result. This is what we came up with. So we got our nice disconnection. Um, I even colored this mannequin for you guys, but I just love the choppiness of this. We used our razor, our Donald Scott razor. We used our scissors. We used over direction. We used disconnection. So this haircut's full of all kinds of cool stuff. So I hope you guys like it. Make sure you post in the comments. Let me know what you think. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy watching this as much as I enjoyed doing it for you guys. Jennifer, thanks for the request. If you guys wanna see a haircut, post it in the comments below. Um, mostly haircuts, that color thing was a struggle for me today, but uh, post what you wanna see and uh, I'll see if I can get it done for you guys. Here we go with our step-by-step -step cut. All right, so we're gonna start off by sectioning parietal ridge down to a point uh, just at low crown, and then we're gonna section off our disconnections that are gonna happen in the side, which is a nice square section from mid ear uh, to, to the whole temple area. So just twisting that away. The sectioning really tells the story of the cut, guys. So when you're thinking about how you wanna go about somebody's haircut, let's say it's a celebrity or whatever it is, just look at the cut, figure out each little aspect of it, and then section off each part of the head. So all the disconnection happens on the side and in the back. So what I wanted to do was section off a rounded shape, which I'll spin this and show you guys in a second, um, but that goes right to the middle of our disconnected square. The reason I'm starting in the middle um, is so that I have a complete disconnection all the way around the outer perimeter of the haircut. So just sectioning away those, those sections. We're using our Donald Scott carving comb for the first part of this haircut. We're actually gonna switch it up. So I wanted to start off with the razor. We're gonna start by creating those short layers. The way that we're gonna do this is we go in cutting the short layers, big strokes with the razor, and then we fade away and leave the length uh, around the nape area. So starting off carving nice and short in, let's just say you're you're pretty much following the occipital bone area down to the nape, um, that angle when you first cut in and then just dropping out and leaving the length um, as you continue down. That length is gonna be a little bit more extreme than we're gonna leave it at the very end of the cut, but I wanna leave a little extra length. That gives me some freedom when I go in to do the dry cut later. So. You could see there's not much over direction in my cutting on the back part of this haircut. So everything's pretty much following the head shape, coming straight out from the round of the head um, and just creating the layering. We're gonna spray some of our prepare. This is our liquid tool glide. This is like the best thing that was ever invented for razor cutting because it allows the razor to just glide and slide through the hair, keeps the condition in the hair. So again, this is the same kind of feel. We're following the round of the head. We really want to collapse the shape. That was the cool thing about this cut was that it, it's not a bob. It, it's nice and collapsed and shaggy looking. So we go in, cut those short layers, follow the round of the head, and then uh, this one, we're not leaving the disconnection. We're actually connecting to uh, the bottom that we already cut. So now we're gonna work into the top. This is a fun technique because what I wanted to do was she has almost like a little faux hawk feel to the middle of her haircut. So what I wanted to do is add the weight. So I wanted to remove it from the sides and add it to the middle. So what I'm doing is I'm starting my guide off on the side of the, right, right on the parietal ridge. So coming straight up off the parietal ridge. And then I'm gonna over direct everything. I'm gonna make that a stationary guide. I'm gonna bring everything to that and just cut it. I'm cutting this blunt because she, she has more of a precision feel on the top of the head. So that's what I wanted to create. So she had more freedom and layers throughout the sides and the back and then it was more precise on the top. And you know, even if that's not how they did her haircut, I think it's a cool way to do it. 
So just going through, taking those sections, I'll go all the way across the whole Mohawk section and bring it over. So even though I'm going to, you know, I'm going to recut the, the right hand side, I definitely, I like to over direct it, clean it all up, and then we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. So just bring everything over till you run out of hair. If you're client has longer hair you're not going to run out of hair so you'll just finish it up just like this and the story of this cut is really just following that head shape so even at this point um, I'm bringing everything straight up to that stationary guy but I'm following the round of the head the whole time uh, you'll see a good angle of it here um, just bringing everything straight up from the parietal ridge over and recutting another guideline. Now our guideline starts from the back, so that's why you don't have to worry about the the sides being the same length or anything like that. Um, now you're going to see me pushing away. That's me pushing. Now, so we pulled everything to the one side for the first cut, and now uh, we're working on the opposite side of the head. So now I'm pushing everything over to above the parietal ribs. There wasn't much to cut there. I bring out the disconnections. And now I'm going to work on the fringe. This is probably the, the key factor of this cut, making sure that you get the fringe right. Um, I'm going to go back to the Donald Scott carving comb for this. It's a broken fringe. It has a little bit of a precise look to it, but as long as you stay small with the strokes on the razor, you'll get a, a slightly shattered fringe, but um, a, more of a precise look. Then we can chop into it later. So I'm connecting. So I cut the fringe using the 100% carve side of the carving comb. Then I go in and just connect that corner. I just kind of carve out that corner a little bit, add, add a few pieces around the face. And we do the same thing on this side. What you're gonna see me doing uh, the most right now with the fringe is combing the hair to see exactly how it's gonna fall. And then I'm sectioning it or imparting it to make the cut from there. Uh, I think it's really important not to over direct too much because the more you start really pulling hair and over directing it, you're gonna cut it where it's not gonna live and then you're not gonna have the result that you want. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow it dry. I know this looks extreme at this point. Don't leave me yet. Um, I the disconnections have not been cut so it's definitely more extreme on the sides we're going to do a flat wrap and then we're going to iron uh this is our bricado vibra straight iron and uh yeah just going through smoothing it out i haven't even colored it yet because i wanted to color it at the end when it you know has the least amount of hair so we're going to go through i want to cut a little bit of a concave layering in this is connecting the razor cut so connecting the razor cut to the scissor just a real quick uh clean up there and now i'm going to go through with my donald scott carving comb and work the fringe some more we're going to use our 50 percent carve side so this Actually, this side of the carving comb only cuts 50% of the hair. So it allows you to get that broken up bang that you're looking for. So I just keep taking horizontal sections, slight diagonal forward as I work through um, the top fringe of the haircut. And then I'm just grabbing little pieces, 100% carved side, and just breaking it up. This is where you get that freedom of using a razor. It's just going in there and deciding how much weight you want to remove uh, for the specific look you're going for. Okay, so now this is the fun part. This is where the whole haircut starts to come together. So we're gonna work our disconnection. Um, yes, I'm cutting dry hair with a razor. We've conditioned the hair. I have a brand new blade. All of this is okay to do as long as your blade is nice and sharp. So went through there, did a little backhand razor cutting. Um, going through, there's some more backhand razor cutting. Just turning the razor so I'm not cutting a big chunk, not using the full horizontal blade. Um, so just using little pieces of the blade, a little pinch cutting in there, um, some more pinch cutting, and just going through 50% carved side. This is all artistic, guys, so just going through however you feel and creating that shape. I want to remove a little weight from this side, so I go in 50% carve and just clean it up. You can see those layers just pop. Um, razor point cutting that we do with the Donald Scott carving comb. Going through the top, removing weight. We created that weight line on the top um, by over-directing each side to the parietal ridge, so now I'm just softening that weight line. So we're almost to our end result. Um, a couple more cutting things that we're gonna do after the color processes. So right now I'm putting on a 2N uh, from Vibra Color, and we're using a 10 volume developer. I just wanted to really match up the look. This haircut does not look the same on light brown hair. So this will be a nice black 
uh, feel to the hair color. So we're going through, we're going to let that process. Um, don't diss me on my color technique. I did get color all over the mannequin. The amazing thing about Vibracolor is somehow um, it didn't stain the mannequin. I don't know how that works. But um, so we went through and I uh, put on our Bricado cream gel, uh, which I really like. It's the hold on gel. Um, I'm going through ironing the haircut again. So now a little bit of slide cutting. I want to piece out. Uh, this is something that you're not going to get quite with the razor, so I'm using my Mizutani DB20 scissor that I used for the entire haircut um, on dry hair. So a lot of people say, well, what's your favorite all-around scissor? The DB20 is definitely my favorite. Um, it's a great investment because you can do dry cutting and wet cutting with it. So we're sliding in, half-closing the scissor, and just piecing out those disconnections a little bit more. And now going in deep point cutting into the back of the cut. And that's just to add, again, a little bit more separation in the nape of the neck. And now I want to open up that cheekbone area a little bit. I just think that that kind of gives a little pop to the cut. Uh, this is a Bricado Carve. I want to go through. It's a cream wax. So um, it doesn't have a ton of hold, but it, it's perfect for women's short hair because it does give enough hold to create that look. So you can see the, the pieciness happening um, and the separation in the fringe. So there's our end result, guys. I hope you guys like this vlog. And thank you again to Jennifer for requesting this cut. If you guys want to request the cut, do it in the comments below. And definitely uh, let me know your thoughts on this video. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that haircut and the color. Um, and make sure if you liked this video, hit the like button, hit the share button, share it with all of your friends out there and make sure you leave a comment and let me know what you think because I love reading all of your comments. Uh, it definitely fuels the fire in making these videos every day. So thank you guys so much for the support and watching all the time and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.